housing, NYCHA, maybe the largest public housing authority in North America, right? But it's not the only one. And they're all facing similar challenges. Look. Residents remember when it was a safe place to live, but now they fear for their lives. People just living here on borrowed time. Public housing has always been both a financial proposition and a moral one about which people both need it and somehow deserve it. So that's a clip from an upcoming documentary on the infamous East Lake Meadows public housing projects in Atlanta, Georgia. Joining us this morning are the filmmakers who made it all happen, Sarah Burns and David McMahon. So good morning to both of you. Good morning. I think so many people here in New York are fascinated by this topic. We here at Pix 11 certainly are because we spend a lot of our time reporting on NYCHA and New York City public housing. So Sarah, let's start with you. And what made you say, OK, I want to do a documentary on East Meadows? Yeah, our interest there actually started with the with this new transformation. This housing project was torn down and replaced, but we quickly realized that that just focusing on the new place was only a tiny fraction of the story and that to really understand what public housing has been through, we had to go back and, and meet the residents and to actually talk to people who had lived in this place and understand what their experiences were and even some of the history of sort of how did we get here? How did it get to be this kind of place that was such a terrible place to live in many ways, but also saw so much really strong community building mm -hmm. um, among these residents. And when you look back at how public housing began, you were saying, David, some, some of it was to serve pr predominantly white communities. Yes, I think that was one thing that I hadn't anticipated was that building public housing, it, was, it sort of furthered segregation in this country in a mm -hmm. way that I didn't understand. And that when places were cleared uh, to build public housing, they put up a, a bill, they put up public housing, and it was exclusively for white residents. And then another side of town, they put up public housing that was exclusively for black residents. So suddenly you had segregation in communities where it hadn't existed before. And I think what's so interesting with this documentary are the personal stories that I think so many people in our area can certainly relate to. So let's play a clip from the documentary hearing from those residents. When we moved to East Lake Meadows, that was just like heaven to us until it became a nightmare. I figured they were gonna be fine because they were brand new. After a couple of years, they were not okay. So brand new, you'd think, hey, that sounds amazing. But the structure, the foundation, there were so many problems that went into it. Um, so when did it turn bad? Yeah, so East Lake Meadows in particular was opened in 1970, which was sort of late for public housing. Some of the housing that was built earlier was actually really well built. But by this time, it was really designed and expected to serve a very low income population that was almost entirely African American. And so it was shoddily built because the government was not interested in creating, building good housing for that population. This was about warehousing people sort of on the edge of the city. And so there were problems with the sewer system almost immediately right. after it opened. And then of course it's just not maintained, right? Those things are not fixed. And so the place gets worse and worse and the social services are not there. And so the experience of people living in there just become more and more difficult. I think the question is, is why? Why do we let it get so bad? And that's what we're seeing with NYCHA. We're, they, they can't come up with the money now. There's a federal monitor involved in trying to make NYCHA back to what it was when it first began. Dave, what was the most surprising thing you learned from, from doing the documentary? Oh, I think it was just that, you know, we think about um, that where we live is based on, you know, a million small choices, and that ends up creating segregation. But actually, it's that we, we don't, we, We've, we've caused this, the federal government has caused this. Mm -hmm. And I think that I was, I was surprised to learn that, um, that we, we disinvest, we, you know, white flight happened, people left, the tax base went out of town, and we turned a blind eye and we allowed this to fall into a state of poverty and, and we blame the people for that happening. And, and East Lake Meadow was eventually torn down mm -hmm. and became mixed um, income housing. So would you say the solution for some of these housing projects around the country is to tear it down and start over? You know, it's hard to say because I think there's a lot of different ways that people have approached it. And I think what we found with East Lake Meadows was that while I think it was well-intentioned, this idea of creating this new community, the reality is that it doesn't today serve the same people who lived there before. And so I think there's a bigger question that we have to apply to anything we're doing with public housing, whether it's about the funding or whether we're tearing it down and creating mixed income communities, is about whether we are actually caring enough about mm -hmm. the people who need it most to serve them well. Absolutely. I think this is opening the eyes, continuing the conversation. Real quick, David, when can people watch the documentary and where? It'll be on public television nationally on March 24th. That's a Tuesday at 8 p.m. All right, we're gonna have that information on our website on pix11.com as well. Thank you both for shedding a light on this important issue and for coming in to talk about it. Appreciate Thanks it. For